Welcome to the second episode of Series 25, everyone. We'll be diving into our character creation for Golden Sky Stories with guests David Gunsberg and Morgan Jenkins in just a moment. But first, announcements! 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 So, the Descent into Midnight Kickstarter is officially over as of the time that this gets into people's ear holes. (laughs) (laughs) Ear holes. And, and, yeah, and you know what? They did amazingly well. Um, you know as, what fish have? They have ear holes. Too. Ear holes. Exactly. <laughs> just like us. <laughs> just They're like just like us. us. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's also just like us. Descent into Midnight Characters. Uh, no, I think they're distinctly not. <laughs> that was not a good segue. Fine. All right. I got thrown off by the ear holes. <laughs> okay. But that's okay. Well, as we record, there are still six hours left, so we can't say actually how great they were, uh, but I think we could say it was pretty great. Real great. Really, Real really great. great. Really, really great. Fantastically great. Uh-huh. If you are sad about not being able to back a Kickstarter, fear not. Pasión de las Pasiones Kickstarter is still going on uh, in case you're dying to back something. Mm-hmm. There are... That will be going on for another three days, so please don't miss your chance to get this game and get involved in some serious drama. 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 Yeah, that I that is near the top of my list of games I, I need to play uh, very soon. Yeah, I haven't played it, but I have the Ashcan version, and I'm just, like, dying. Mm-hmm. Dying to play it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another really great Kickstarter about to wrap up is the Princess World Kickstarter. Um, it has about eight days left before they are done. And it would be amazing to unlock what I call the Amelia tier of princesses. Yeah. Otherwise known as the Dark Princesses, uh, which all sound amazing. So if you haven't checked out this Kickstarter, uh, absolutely do so before it's too late. Yes. Well, friends, Ryan, when you edit this, can you put like a sad, like funeral dirge in the background? (laughs) Friends, the day has finally come. We have no reviews left to read. And honestly, we are heartbroken. Mm -hmm. So perhaps we can all find some time when we are stuck in our homes to leave reviews for our favorite creators. We strongly encourage you to leave a review or a rating for a show you love, even if it isn't ours. And we are starting this catchphrase I've decided, spread joy, not germs. (laughs) I really hope that in a few years people go, like there's somebody that goes back and listens to our backlog and is like, what are these people talking about? What are these people Um, talking about? Why is everyone stuck in their homes? So yes, uh, that's our that's our goal. Spread joy, not germs. Please leave a rating or review for a podcast you love, even if it's not ours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because every little review, every little bit of uh, validation is uh, a, such a special feeling for us content creators. It is. Uh, speaking of joy. Yeah. Let's get to the episode. Mm-hmm. So then we then we can get extra powers by choosing weaknesses. Um, oh, this so the, is my favorite part. So the core <laughs> uh, book has a whole lot of extra ones. So, but I'll I'll do my dog ones first if people are okay with that. Mm-hmm. So I can get the additional power of sorry, um, which is means that I'm such a good kid and such a good dog that if I apologize, I'll be forgiven. Uh, And if I use that power, people will forgive me for pretty much any non-fatal mistake as long as I apologize. But I have to be a proper sad dog or a proper sad child or a proper sad human and be real. And I buy, I I earn that by picking up the weakness of honest. Mm. I am a very honest dog who just can't lie. Throughout any story, you can't tell lies at all. Not even the lies that would be kind. Mm. Um, Mm. and, uh, the other additional power, cause I would of course 
um, lean heavily into these and I would take them both um, is perseverance where I have the ability to persevere through pretty much anything. If I use that, I can ignore being surprised and I can also use my power to persevere through one of my own weaknesses. So to get perseverance, that costs me, I become a clumsy puppy. Mm. I'm not very good at doing things efficiently or taking care of myself. My adult attribute has to be set to zero and you can only use one point of feelings on a given adult check. So it says in the rule book, just as an aside, that interacting with technology is something that Henge aren't very good at. And it says door handles include technology, a technology. So I've had a dog that really wanted to get in to help someone in a shop and they had taken clumsy and they just couldn't figure out how to make the door handle work. <laughs> So they were like stuck on the outside of the convenience store window in human form trying to get in oh. to help and just oh, no. couldn't work out how to use the door handle oh. until the cat had to kind of groan and go, oh, let me open the door for you. <laughs> That's adorable. So what, what additional powers are there for the rest of you that appeal and what are the weaknesses they come with? Um, so I picked my additional power based on the weakness. Yeah. Uh, instead of picking the power. Uh so I I chose to go with cat ton. Um, so there's a lot of things that I can't eat. So basically, I'm just a picky eater. I can't have hot uh, temperature wise things, uh, citrus fruits, squid, or raw onions, things like that. Um, and if I if I accidentally do eat any of that, uh, I automatically get affected by a level seven surprise, <gasps> which Ooh. which sounds that sounds that sounds terrifying. Big. Yeah. <laughs> which I I I mainly wanted to pick that because of the uh, role playing possibilities, yeah. Um, and I think that would be really really fun to to play with that. Um, by taking Cat Ton, I get feigned innocence, uh, so it lets me hide my true character and put on an excellent act. Um, and I have to declare using that before I make the check. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. My other option was can't swim. Uh, where I just can't swim, uh, and I get surprised if I fall into water, um, and that would have given me acrobatics. You can you move can see as though you're start practically to... flying. Wow. You can see how they connect now, where yeah. if I've taken Honest um, in the scene, if you're going to try and interact with a human or a, another henge and tell them a little fib, I'm going to mum terribly at the camera in dog form going, <gasps> He's telling a lie. He's lying. <laughs> I like that. Oh, okay. So who's 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 got who's next? I can I can do mine. Um, I kind of want both. <laughs> um, can you take both? You can. Oh, wow. Are you gonna take both? Yeah, I may as well. <laughs> okay. See, this is when you've got people. I should be writing all PBTA this down. Where. You know, I have people go, do I have to take these? I don't want to have weaknesses. And it's like, N no, you don't Why have not? to. But, like, take them. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the weak yeah, weaknesses I in this are more flavor for the character than anything else. They just help yeah. guide you. So one of my choices for weakness is strange. You speak and dress in a way that's out of touch with the times or just looks conspicuous and flamboyant. Because uh, you stand out so much, you can't really hide. And if you try to walk around town in human form, you draw everyone's attention. Oh, that's just me Gosh. in real life. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm wearing sneakers with a long dress today. Just does not go together. But I wanted to. I don't know how humans dress. Um, and for that, I can take float. You can float through the sky at a leisurely pace. And you can move through the air with the speed a person can walk. Um I really like that because I feel like you can do those at the same time. It just look a little bit strange because you're slightly levitating above the ground <laughs> and it looks weird. Um, and then I have bluff. You are always exaggerating your abilities. You must spend two points of feelings just to be able to spend feelings to raise your attributes in a jack. Yeah. Um, and for that, I get present. You can give a human an object with special power in it. Pick any one of the power of yours from or one of your from one of your friends to put into the object. If they use it properly, they can use that power. So that's awesome. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So you could you could put your ability to make that uh, little rain shower in a token and and give it to the person we're trying to help. Yep. 
That's cool. I love it so much. Now, th- there are more um, weaknesses and powers in the rule book itself, starting on sort of page 38 and going forwards. But going with what I've got here in the quick start, um, I chose bird brain for my weakness, which is I tend to forget things very quickly. I cannot do knowledge-related adult or henge checks at all, even if me as the player remembers things, my bird will forget. (laughs) Except that me as the player also won't remember things, so that's fine. And then for that, I get the power of trust the wind, and I can go into action putting my trust in luck, and I will come out on top. When I use this, I gain three points of feelings. Nice. Scatty burb with big heart. (laughs) So that's... That's the kind of our magical powers. Now we Mm -hmm. want to think about our other attributes. So you have eight points to allocate across henge, animal, adult, and child. Mm -hmm. Uh, So as a a quick reminder, your henge is uh, like the default you get on your magic powers. Animal is your physical prowess. Adult is your ability to hide feelings, interact with technology, which is everything from a door handle up. Uh, And child is your ability to express emotions. So if Mm -hmm. I look at mine, because I took um, clumsy, my adult has to be set to zero. Oh, wow. um, Which leaves me with eight. I think I'm going to be very good at... At doing child and and like helping other people, so I'm going to put four in child, right. and then I'm going to put two in henge and two in animal, and that's that for that's me. It. So yeah, clumsy, honest dog. That's really cool. uh, um, for myself, I went with three henge, um, one animal, one adult, and three child. Um, so I wanted to be kind of magical and, and be able to, um, spread joy. Love it. Um, for my bird, I went with, uh, zero on adult because bird brain, um, really doesn't let me do, uh, adult, uh, or henge checks at all. Um, so then I put four into animal and four into child and zero into henge as well Hmm. cool all right what's next well i gotta do mine oh yes but i'm trying to math yeah and i had to change mine because i math wrong i misread bird brain and didn't realize that i can't do henge uh checks either so (laughs) what i said i had to pick so i'm sorry um i'm just taking the eight and putting them into these four things yep correct right so you split it up okay and and if we're making this as a party, we are a very low adult party. You are surrounded by children. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's, cool, cool, that's cool. True. You could use your mom voice as a fox. <gasps> oh, I could. Hmm. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me do the math here. And I think it's um normally adult is the only attribute that can be zero. Um yeah. But there's some exceptions, of course, depending on your uh, your uh, weakness. Two, three, one, one. Okay. Hmm. Does that work? Three, five, seven, eight. I'm gonna do three in henge. Mm-hmm. Two in animal, two in adult, and one in child. Nice. Nice. That's very good for a fox. That's a good fox. Nice. All right. And a very good dog. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's sort of the starting point for our resource economy. So if we think about um, uh, checks, like the difficulty rating on checks ranges from zero to nine. I possibly should have said that at the beginning. So if there's a... Uh, you know, an, an average check of two to three and your um, ability in that is equal to that number, you don't need to dip into your resource pools at all. There's no random dice roll. There's just, I can do that uh, and it will just happen. And then if you needed to do something more challenging and let's say it was a 
six in child uh, and my child is um, is four, then um, I'll need to spend um, two feelings to make up the difference. Okay. And then I just succeed. There's no dice roll. There's just, did you want to succeed or not? Yes or no? It's up to you. Very cool. So then we get into what uh, I think is kind of the the fun bit. Uh, well, that's all fun, but another cool fun bit is uh, what is your henge form and personality and what is your human form? So henge are kind of weirdly ageless. You can be any age and your human form doesn't need to link to your henge form. So you could be... Um, um, an an ancient henge whose human form is of a young child uh, or the other way around. Usually if you want to be outside the bracket of 8 to 18 in human years for your human form, you check with the narrator, but I've never knocked anyone back. Uh, and then in your human form, uh, equally important um, is your fashion and any notable accessories that your that you have. So for form and personality, if you can think about a name, a gender, an age, appearance. And the last thing I'd like you to think about is in this small Japanese village, where are we likely to find your henge? So if anyone if no one wants to lead off, I can go first. I've got uh, most of my stuff taken care okay. of already. Go. All right. So uh, the name of my uh, cat Henge is uh, Lady Sakura Fluffing Flufferton. <laughs> mm. Is that her jellical name? Uh, effectively, uh, right? <laughs> um, she is uh, Henge, uh, thirty-nine years old, uh, and represents uh, herself as a human of eighteen years old. Uh, she her pronouns. Um, and her appearance as a cat is extra fluffy with a dark gray fur and a white patch on her neck. Very distinguished. And um, so when where, she takes human form? When she takes human form, that, that extra fluffy dark gray fur, uh, kind of translates into wild, uh, like deep gray hair. Um, I saw a bunch of like, pictures on here with cat ears and i like yep. that i like having the the big cat ears because that's that's really uh adorable so i might as well go with that as well um and i think uh even though she has a fancy name i think she goes for a more of a uh like kind of a whimsical sort of dress uh like uh stuff that that stands out a bit um, in society uh, and some things that, that don't have any real rhyme or reason to them. Um, and I think she wears a collar in both forms. Nice. I gotta pick a name. They've got a list of names on there, if you want to look. Where? Um, it is on page... It's right above the fox page. Oh, I found it. Yep. So you got a whole list of... Uh, Names that that have different meanings and whatnot. Oh, and where where will you find me? Yeah. Um, in various in garden form. Where are you going to? Yeah, hang? various gardens, uh, like rooftop gardens. Gorgeous. For some reason, I've always uh, I've always liked the the thought of like uh, villages with uh, with little gardens on the on various rooftops. And in those little Japanese villages, where you know even. That little strip that's like one one meter by thirty centimeters, or like three feet by one feet, at the front of a house, in between the house and the gutter, will have a beautiful garden. In it. And there's so many places for a cat to put themselves. Okay, I think I know know most of the things that I want here. So uh, for a name, I'm going to go with Shiro, which means white. Um, I'm an all white fox. Mm. Except for just like a tiny tip of black at like the very end of my tail. Um, age, I'm gonna say, I want to be like really old, like 
I don't know, hundreds of years old. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. But then as a human, I want to be like 16. So and in I both think, forms, you're old enough to know everything. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Completely. Um, so I also stand out So in my human form. So I want to say that I have like stark white hair still in my human form. Nice. Um, even though I'm 16. Um, and then for clothing, I want to say that like I dress in like the whatever the equivalent is of like what a middle aged person would wear, not like what a sixteen year old would mm. wear. Um, and I just am totally fine with that, and like doesn't bother me. Um, but it's just sort of confusing because it it is just like a cognitive dissonance. Like you have white hair and you dress like a mom, but you're sixteen. <laughs> I, like I, I I know that hundreds. Oh, and then I have old. to say where I hang out, don't yeah. I? Um, under people's porches. Nice. Love it. Sorry, what was the name? Shiro. Shiro. Which means white. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. So my name is Karasu, and it means crow, and I happen to be one. I have a very imaginative nice. name. <laughs> um, I'm a girl. I you am 17, both in human and henge form. Mm. And in, in henge form, I am a black crow, black feathers, um, often found in fountains in the town square. In human form, I have long, straight black hair down my back. Um, I have lots of black clothes, black eyeliner. I may be dressed somewhat like a goth, and mm-hmm. I have some feathered bracelets on the end of each arm. Nice. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That's a good look. That is a very good look. And and you are like the absent-minded goth friend <laughs> with bird brain. Completely. Mm-hmm. And, like and one of I, my goals here. I, I look go. like I should be very serious, but I am very much not so. <laughs> <laughs> So one of my goals here was to like get uh, an a, a trademark copyright Amelia Antrim. Ugh. I feel Ugh. like those two characters, Shiro the white fox, sixteen year old who knows everything, with the I can't believe she's a year older than me, and it's like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> yeah. She, there you go. There would Just be, for you. Thank you. <laughs> And did we do where we're going to find? Yeah, Karasu is going to be when she's in bird form. Form will be flitting around fountains. Yeah, that's oh, awesome. I love it. So um, for my dog, my mutt dog, I've gone for Hoshi uh, or Hoshi, which means star. And he's got like uh, he him pronouns, and he's got like a white star of fur somewhere between his. Uh, his eyes and other people refer to it as a distinguishing mark, but because he's never seen it, he's not sure he really has one. Um, (laughs) And because he's clumsy and has no adult, um, he's, he's kind of, uh, I'm going to say kind of perpetually 11 in both forms. Hmm. Uh, And in uh, Henge form, he uh, probably has some sort of, very um, nicely made but easy to do up um, uh, like uh, happy coat kimono type crossover and the sort of peasant shorts um, and sandals that he can just slip his feet into and um, blonde brown hair and in um, uh, sorry that's let me back that up in henge form he's just a mutt in human form, I was thinking about that aesthetic and transferring it forwards because adult is so low for him that he can't, he literally can't button up pants. He's going to have Velcro shoes because uh, he can't do laces, mm. uh, mismatched oversized socks that he can sort of slip his human feet in and out of because they're so difficult to handle, and then like drawstring pants and a t shirt and a cap that's 
thrown on his head, like literally thrown on his head. So it might be backwards, but if it's backwards, it's not because he's trying to be cool. It's just he <laughs> he can't even. So sometimes sometimes it's off to the side, sometimes it's forward. Um, so Hoshi looks like someone loaded some clothing into a cannon and fired it at him from across the street. <laughs> I love it. And, oh my god! And he's eleven, and as he's coming up the street towards you, you go, something catastrophic is going to happen um, because this person seems to be made mainly out of knees, elbows, and accidents. Hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. And he hangs out with you. <laughs> Yay! And where you're going to find him in town? is wherever anyone is throwing one of those plastic handball rubber handballs that makes that dunk dunk noise. Mm-hmm. So as soon as the kids are playing ball somewhere, Hoshi is like, gotta go. And is gonna <laughs> go there. That's amazing. Oh, I love these characters. I love yeah. I love how varied they are. And yeah. and yet they're all going to be coming together and working together for some common goal. Mm-hmm. So let's think about this village and think about some of the connections we might want to explore. So let's start with, um, in the game, you, at the start of each scene, we earn wonder and feelings equal to uh, our connections, the connections from others that flow to us and the connections from us that flow out to others. Um, so let's think about how we're each connected to, we'll just do to one of the rest of it. We all know each other, mm-hmm. but let's think what's the strongest connection amongst the four of our characters uh, and how do we feel about them? And feeling about them uh, is um, our connections aren't on the quick start, but in the full one you'll see there in the bottom of the character sheet, mm-hmm. you keep track of who you're connected to and it says contents. That's where you put how do I feel about them. So, for example, um Hoshi may feel um, really connected to um, Karasu the Crow uh, and feel uh, affection for them because she um, gets that I just heard a ball, so I have to go. Um, and I get that uh, she just remembered about that flower that might flower later this afternoon, so has to go to a garden. Hmm. And then I would mark down that we have uh, – Hoshi has that connection. Um, now, in as much as this game has bleed, it has a sort of a built-in safety mechanic here, which is you cannot form a connection with someone who doesn't want to, be mm-hmm. they a character, a, a player, or a um, an NPC. So I would offer up saying um, I would like to have a connection with Karasu – uh, where we're connected and my feeling for you is uh, um, I might go with affection. I feel affectionate towards Karasu. And then if you agree to that, I would put that as an outgoing connection from me to you and you can put that down as an incoming connection um, from me to you. So it would it will power one kind of resource for me and one kind of resource for her. So for me, it would probably, coming in, it would feel more like protection where I would want to protect this floppy uh, clothing shot out of a cannon full of a a joyous puppy. (laughs) Cool. Okay. Ryan, who do, who does, how is Lady Sakura Fluffington to give her her full honorific? Yeah. Who does she feel connected to? Um... I wanted to be a little bit meta with this answer. Yeah. Um, so, so Morgan, your character, uh, how about uh, our characters got trapped in like some <laughs> sort of uh, vault of some sort? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And, uh, and, and I want to, I want to say uh, if this is all right, you, your, uh, your bird brain um uh trait kind of uh had you close the door and just so locked like we us were, in there we by accident both, we were both in some rooftop garden that could only be like they put netting over the top of it and we'd somehow yeah. gotten in and then i managed to shut the door because it's a polite thing to do exactly 
<laughs> and we got can trapped I pitch in there. something from the can I pitch something from the outside yeah that um I'm I'm thinking that a cat getting trapped like that that means that there was potentially a cardboard box in there <laughs> absolutely if it fits, um, it sits yeah exactly absolutely I think somebody's seller he got you found the perfect box, perfect box downstairs in somebody's storage area. <laughs> <laughs> Cellar doors. Oh, that's amazing. You've been looking for the perfect box for months. Mm-hmm. It, this one fits me perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like You sit so good in that one. Like, all, <laughs> uh, like a- after I sit in there and lay down, like my fluff fills up the entire volume. Uh, and like, it's perfect. It doesn't go too much over the yeah, top. Yeah, it's it's like I'm a little uh, pile of liquid fluff inside this box. I love it. It was fantastic. It's gorgeous. So, how do you two feel about each other after that? Um, I want to say, <laughs> like, like the evil part of me wants to say family because we got stuck in there for so long that we feel like right. we live with each other for a long time. <laughs> right. Part part of me, um thinks logically rivalry uh because like oh we got stuck in here but um i want to say i found the box because we got stuck in here um so probably like i was gonna say trust might make sense too since we both had to like get out of it together that's true trust would make sense let's go through that whole seller thing so trust you trust them you go to them when you need help yes and if we were going to play these people, the the narrator in me, I've just written down box um, because the the bird can carry items from place to place. So I have this image in my mind of the crow sometime when you weren't looking, kind of got in through the basement window and like dragged that box up the stairs <laughs> and, and you have that box hidden somewhere as like a secret cat treasure. Oh, heck that yeah. When you, you know, when you need to be cat in liquid form, yep. you can just go to that perfect box and, and like do that. I'm the, I'm the auto of, uh, from Deep Space Nine, uh, yes, of cats. Yes, and that's cats. your bucket. That's oh. my bucket. <laughs> oh, that's, that's amazing. And I feel like those two would probably talk about the months that they spent down there. And um, Shiro is like thinking to herself, they were in there like four minutes, five minutes tops. <laughs> right. They're talking about it. This is harrowing experience. Uh-huh. And as someone who has already lived for hundreds of years, <laughs> it's like, come uh-huh. on. That was like a minute. Yeah. You got That's stuck right. in a room together and yeah. Now your best buds. Good for you. Cool. So in in full play, we would build out more of those. Um, and that, that would include resource. building them out into people in the town as well, wouldn't uh, it? Which I think we should do. I cool. think we should do that. Um, so at a meta level, we also have as a group and as individuals, we have a connection to the town. Uh, and like the non-violence piece that's built in is as – as our shenanigans continue, the town at a meta level, even if they don't know about us, is very accepting of us mm-hmm. because people are having a better time in this town because people's experiences are being gently nudged and husbanded through by this um, ragtag bunch of animal spirits. And if we ever get into a fight, um, that the connection with the town gets knocked right down uh, and we lose that kind of meta resource of connection to the town. Hmm. Um, which is I, I like to call that out because it's a reinforcing mechanic for the ethic that's in the game. Mm-hmm. So then, uh, in order to start sketching out the story that these we won't play, but let's let's think about. I'd like you to think about your henge and think about a person in the village that your henge specifically is connected to. They could be a child who knows about you and you interact with them openly. They could be an adult who we used to interact with, but they've grown up now. And so we still look over them. You still look over them and you help them with your magics, but uh, they don't see you in Henge form anymore. Or perhaps an old person who's lived their life and you've come back into their life again. Um, and they would be woven into the story and think about, you know, what hook you might want to put in them that might draw 
your henge to this person in our game. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have a name for this person. But I think because I look like I'm 16, I want to be like Mary Poppins, like, but like a 16 year old babysitter. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That's amazing. Yeah, I want to have like a kid. So I'm debating whether it's a kid that I currently babysit or like an adult that I used to babysit. Um, although they only they don't see me in my henge form then. Um, yeah, I think it's a kid that I babysit for currently. Um, that I am just like to their parents, I'm just weird and quirky because I'm 16 and youth these days. Um, but to this kid, I am like truly a magical babysitter. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. And you're probably really good value because we don't understand human money. Oh, yeah. Super cheap. They can't understand like what, like there must be something wrong with her, but who knows? So, um, can I say I, I love Shiro the babysitter. When my mum did shift work, I have a feeling that she may have babysit me and my brothers once. <laughs> <laughs> And we had to lie and tell our mother that she was terrible in the hope that mum wouldn't bring her back. But that backfired and mum went, oh, if the kids thought she wasn't very, very good. Must have really laid down the law then. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I love it. That's really cool. Who else has something? I don't know if I could top that. My goodness. <laughs> I want to. Oh, okay. I got one. Ooh. Um, There is an old woman who uh, tends to her garden, like, religiously every single day, um, you know, rain or shine. And uh, she doesn't have any family remaining. Um, so she kind of, uh, I, I spend a lot of time with her uh, helping tend the garden. Um, and... She and I feel like family to one another. That's beautiful. That's a great connection. And that's a really rich one. That's great. And excellent. I, I feel like if there's an NPC that I would want to, to weave into the narrative, it would probably be like a, a slightly overstressed, bumbling postman traveling around from place to place to place to place. Potentially, like, accidentally riding his bicycle through hedgerows and having his hat covered in twigs. <laughs> and I will, at times, like, sit in his hat with its twigs on it and, and ride around or pick a pick a twig off of his shoulder and use it in my nest. Um, but also utilizing his bike and him as a way to quickly dart around from place to place and keep track of everyone and everything. Nice. Awesome. And... Um, just to jump back to Shiro, hmm. this kid who we don't have a name, um, male, female, and then what's how do you feel about each other? Um, or pronouns, I, I should think, say. yeah, I think um, he, him. Uh, I think I feel pretty protective. Cool. Um, I don't, I don't know how he feels about me. I would say, I would say affection. Cool. I'm a cool magical babysitter. Mm -hmm. I like it. So, thank you for that. So, Karasu the Crow, this postman, um, did we do the contents of that connection? How does that? How do you feel about each other? I, I think, I think there's definitely acceptance from from him to towards me. Um, or no, I'd, I'd even go so far as to say there's affection. Um, in yeah, we'll go affection in both directions because I I like. I like having him around, and I feel like I'm almost like a, a good luck charm for him. I can I can see this in an anime of this this postman riding this bicycle with a basket on the front, and this crow and the front basket sitting there with the wind blowing through its feathers, and like the most like gleeful look on both of their faces, like just, just riding so into the wind. I like that. And and the postman would it would be like um an indicator that all was right in the world when they push off and start riding up the street and they'd go they'd be looking around for where's that crow that tends to hang around? Yeah. <laughs> um I love it. So for Hoshi, 
um, the eternal 11-year-old. I think Hoshi's <laughs> kind of as old as Shiro. And through the centuries, he just hangs out which with whichever human kid is the most clumsy and good-hearted as they grow up. Um, and that I want to say there's a particularly good-hearted and particularly clumsy family, and this kid doesn't know it, but, like, I hang out with their grandfather um, and she is, like, a bit of a clumsy um, kind of geek girl tomboy who likes to play ball because, like, Hoshi's all about playing ball. Uh, maybe she's into soccer. Yeah, I think she's into soccer. And... Um, they both feel weirdly – both of them think they're protecting the other. She thinks he's a clueless boy um, and she's not wrong um, and <laughs> wants to protect him and he's he can see the amazing person she's going to be and just wants to help her through these awkward years, but he's awkward at doing that himself. So I think they're protective oh. in both directions. Awkward friends. <laughs> Is there the any best other kind? kind? Of friends. Is there any other kind? <laughs> if we're not awkward friends, I don't know that we're real friends. Um, at this point in a game, we've done the characters, and I would now say to you, let's create the things uh, that are of interest to us in the town. Give me a place mm -hmm. um, that is related to your henge. So for a kitsune, I would usually say, uh, Amelia, there would be a shrine with a local god. That you're, you are, you know, we're close to the humans. You've got the character that's closest to the gods. So we'll, I'd ask you about that shrine and who's there. Um, and then for the, the rest of us, it would be let's create one place because we've now got a bunch of people we could interact with. Um, we'd create a place uh, and then we'd start. Well, there you go. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for our Golden Sky Stories character creation episodes. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this. Morgan, do you want to remind people where they can find you? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I guess the best place would be the Going In Blind podcast uh, with vision impaired players playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. But I turn up everywhere. I've been a Geek mm -hmm. Wars judge. I'm the interstitial singing in DMnastics. I've turned up on Dungeon Master's Block, uh, Whelm the Young Justice Files, and even provided my uh, voice acting talents to We're So Bad at Adventuring. So just wander <laughs> around and you'll, you'll run across me at some point. Mm-hmm. And David, uh, where can people find you online? The best place to find me on uh, online is on Twitter at Tigranosaurus1. <laughs> Who would have thought that there would be that would already be gone? Uh, <laughs> but uh, Tiger, as in Tiger and Tyrannosaurus in hybrid, Tigranosaurus1 for reasons. Mm -hmm. Fantastic! And I, I love the I love the icon too. <laughs> uh, Ink Oculi yes. did that for me. They were fantastic to work with. <laughs> oh, and I should probably bring up my Twitter, which I totally pay attention to, is at Morrigan Jenk. So Morrigan, like the witch, and Jenk, like the first couple of letters of my last name. <laughs> That's easy enough. Makes sense. Absolutely. Well, thank you both for joining us, and uh, thank you to everyone for listening. Uh, please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast, or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at LordNeptune, or online at LordNeptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. 
Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like Session Zero. Session Zero is a discussion podcast that seeks to explore the psychology of role playing. Each episode will feature RP concepts, stories, and tropes viewed through the lens of psychology by clinical psychologist Porter Green and industrial organizational psychologist Steve Discount. Join us on the couch for the next session.